Hello and welcome everyone to another Play Pro tutorial. In this video we'll take a look at how to import and preview 3D LUTs on our ProRes RAW footage and also how to quickly cycle through different sets of LUTs. Next we will create our own look inside Play Pro based on our ProRes RAW footage and lastly we'll export that look as a 3D LUT to be loaded into our Atomos Ninja 5 or any Atomos device for that matter. So let's dive in right away and import a couple of ProRes RAW clips. Here we go. Now we have a very short timeline of clips and jump right away into the player. First thing to do is zoom out a little bit by using Alt drag up and down, right? And using space drag, we can position the image on the side here. And let's also display our scopes. Maybe make those a little bit bigger. Here we go. Now looking at the QuickTime menu here, we can check our debayering settings for ProRes RAW. And right now we're debayering to Panasonic VGamut and VLog. That's good. And now let's jump into the LUT menu. The LUT menu is pretty straightforward. Let's hit the load button and load one of the many LUTs in this folder. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of lookup tables stored in this folder. I'll just pick the first one hit open and we can see the effect of that LUT right away on our image. Now Play Pro features what we call a LUT cycler. So we have these two arrow buttons here which help us cycle through all the other lookup tables in the same folder. The drop down here gives us direct access so we could for instance choose the Panasonic VLOG 2V709 lookup table from this folder and well, this actually looks pretty good. I can bypass the LUT here to quickly check on the effect of the LUT. And all in all, I'm fairly happy with what the LUT does with my image. Now, obviously what I want is to apply this lookup table to all other clips on my timeline. There's a very easy way to do that. Simply hit copy here on the first clip with the LUT loaded and hit paste right away. What now pops up is a paste menu where we can just uh, enable everything using Command or Control A, or we can just Alt click the item that we want to paste, which is the LUT in this case. And now instead of hitting paste, we will hit paste forward. Confirm once, confirm twice, and what Play Pro now does is paste this LUT forward to all clips on our timeline. Perfect. All right, so this is how you can quickly load, preview and batch apply lookup tables uh, to your footage. And what we now wanna do is create our own look. We can do that in two ways. Uh, we can, for instance, keep the uh, LUT loaded and grade underneath the LUT. For instance, if I switch to the wheels here, we could dial in a color tone, make the image a little bit colder, something like this, and maybe add a bit more contrast, take out the saturation a little bit more, and make this really moody, something like this. Okay. However, we can of course also start completely from scratch. So let me reset the shot. Now we're back to a log image, and now I can dial in a grade. Let me lower the lift here blacks, something like this, and stretch the highlights, something like this. By the way, uh, depending on the machine you're working on, I'm working on a MacBook right now, so for me it would be easier to choose the CDL sliders and dial in a grade like that, something like this, okay, a little bit more contrast here in the midtones. Now I can stretch the highlights. As you can see, I can stretch them just this far and now I would start uh, clipping away some details. However, I'd like the image to be a little bit more bright, more light, so I'll just stretch it, stretch the highlights a little bit beyond the 100% mark here. Because there is a very convenient way to get those highlight details back in like for instance on the woman's shirt here or here in the snow. 
and we can just go to the lot menu and use the soft clip function here. And if I dial up the highlight softness, you will see that we're able to pull back the highlight detail up here in the waveform. Here we go. This looks pretty good. All right, now let's add a little bit more saturation to this image, something like this. Make it a little bit lighter here in the midtones. All right, let's assume we're happy with the look as is. All right, so now what we wanna do is export this look as a 3D LUT. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at the settings, general menu, um, and at the LUT export options. Right now, we're set to 10-bit and a mesh size of 33 points. This is exactly what we need for our Atomos Ninja 5. And frankly, uh, this setting will also work with most softwares and cameras that you can load a lookup table into out there. Obviously, you can crank up this value to 64 points, which will be more accurate. At the same time, then you have to make sure that the target application or device that you plan to load this lookup table into supports this mesh size. Practically speaking, I highly doubt that you will see a difference between a 33 and a 64 point uh, lookup table. So let's leave this at 33, close the settings, hit save, and now save our lookup table to the desktop. Uh, we first need to choose a file format can be either uh, .3dl or .cube. In this case, we'll go with .cube, give this thing a name, my look, all right, and hit save. Done. Now, before we load this lookup table into our Ninja 5, let's make sure it actually does what we expect it to do. Or in other words, let's make sure that it carries our look that we dialed in here 100%. To do that, let me quickly make the scopes smaller again, move them up here, move the image over there, and bring up our version stack here at the bottom. Okay, what I'll do now is add a version and reset that version. So now we have a lock clip that is ungraded and we have the version with our grade on. We can actually even compare the two by hitting S for split view on our keyboard and drop the graded version over here on the right. And now we can wipe back and forth. However, what we actually wanna do is select the ungraded version, go to the LUT menu, and load the lookup table that we just exported, mylook.cube. Hit open, and now we can switch back and forth between the version that has the actual grade on it, here we go, and the version that has the LUT exported from the grade on it. And as we can see, there is no difference between the two. So now we can be sure that our LUT 100% carries our grade. All right, now let's take a look at how to load a lookup table into an Atomos recorder. First, copy the just saved LUT onto a drive, which you can then load into the Atomos. On the Atomos, go to the LUT menu. We have up to eight slots that we can load LUTs into. The first slot already has a LUT loaded. Let's replace that with a new one by clicking the folder button. Confirm and select the new LUT we want to load into slot number one. Done. Now the LUT can be used in three ways in our Atomos. First, as a record LUT. This means that the LUT will get baked into the image. Be aware that this cannot be undone after recording. Once the LUT is baked in, you won't be able to get back to the original lock image in post. Alternatively, you can apply the LUT onto the HDMI loopout of the Atomos, which allows for instant preview on a larger monitor connected to the Atomos. The footage itself, however, will be recorded without the LUT. Lastly, if we hit the compare button, we get a 50-50 vertical screen split that will show both the natural source video and the selected look of the LUT. That's it for this video. I hope this was useful to you and see you next time. Bye.